Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. In today's video, we are going to have a quick look, not an in-depth look, at the newly released update uh, for books devices 3.3.2. So this one is primarily, um, at least on my tab devices, it's addressing some of the issues, um, but uh, not really all of them. And uh, they just continue doing pretty much the same shtick here, and you'll see what I mean. Let's get on with the update 3.3.2. All right, so as mentioned, this is gonna be a quick rundown just through the features. I'm not gonna be able to show and demonstrate exactly and test how they work, because I don't have time for that, unfortunately. But one of the first ones is that in the library, and this is nice that even if you're in directory mode, you have the option to cloud storage supports downloading, only downloading documents to your device to sync reading data, please log into your Onyx account. So you can't uh, synchronize reading data to these external clouds. And um, yeah, and the, the, the ones that are supported are Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, and Nextcloud are now supported, and, but only up, uh, but only downloading. So that's pretty much it. So the updated PDF data can be synced back to cloud storage. However, other formats do not currently support this feature. Okay, so PDF reading data can be synced back to cloud storage. That's good. Cloud storage may have monthly upload and download limits. So maybe, maybe the third party cloud has limitations. Maybe that's what they mean. When there is a large amount of data in the cloud storage, please manually turn to the next pages to load more. Okay, that's odd. So you can actually choose from six. So Dropbox, Google Drive, Baidu Cloud, OneDrive, Not Store, <laughs> Web Dove. I'm not going to do this now because you have to synchronize and do all of that stuff and that's going to take time, but this is something that I will be testing out in the future, but that's now an option for users to have as well. Release notes say that it highlights and underlines should be now possible to be done in color. So let's see that. And I guess you can just tap here and choose yes. And then you can choose to use a different color. So maybe I can choose this one and then you have it like this. Okay, so does it actually convert here? Cool, that's nice to see. Okay, so I did quick little squiggles here because the next one says that uh, annotations can now be filtered by types. I mean, they probably Think by type and um, you don't see it immediately here like filter by type but this is an icon for filtering uh, however if you're not like a developer or an old school uh, 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 PC guy you won't know that so this is the filter and then I can filter between oh just the underlines so I guess that falls into annotations okay so I can just see squiggly lines or full, um, yeah, full on or all of them. Okay, cool. And they also say that as far as NeoReader is concerned, there's two more things that have been added or optimized. Embedding PDF data is now optimized. Now, I don't have any other previous data to compare this to, so there's no point in kind of running that test. And the other one is support for third-party dictionary app as the default dictionary in NeoReader. And this is like a big topic and that's something that I'm gonna make a dedicated video on to see how the dictionaries work, especially with this new update. What does it take to kinda uh, turn it on and make it work and how does it actually work? But that's another thing that's been added in the update 3.3.2. Then we get to the uh, notes and sync. And one of the main things that has been added here is that you can have notebook and a notepad, let's say like that. So I'm gonna characterize notepad as the one where you type in stuff and notebook as the one where you handwrite. So you can choose if it's going to be a handwriting one, standard ones that we've had since before, or now you have something called text. So now that's going to be my uh, and I would like to create it, but I can't minimize the keyboard. <laughs> and the create is somewhere over here. Uh, how are you supposed to use this? Is this, yeah, that's the one to hide. Okay, great, excellent. Create. 
text notes cannot be synced onto firmware version older than 3.3.1. All right, so you have to have your 3.3.2 on all of the devices if you want to synchronize them. All right, so let's, uh, let's just quickly hook up a Bluetooth keyboard to my Note uh, Tab X and see how that works. Okay, I don't know if you've kind of noticed what I typed there, but this is typing in HD mode. So slowest, but the best uh, quality. So now I'm gonna go on balance. I'm gonna change the style and I can choose a different font. Let's say maybe this is the font that I want and I wanna type in much bigger typeface and I want to, yeah, so uh, let's go new one. So this is my new paragraph. And I am typing in a balanced refresh uh, mode. And this is actually quite usable and pleasant. Um, this is really, really good and it's working properly and right, right out the gate you have different bulleting and numbering options, you have the alignment and justification modes, you have spacing control, you have margin control, you have uh, heading level, okay let's see how they are, so this is my is my heading and let's see the shortcuts they work properly excellent and then I can just say hey I want this centered then uh, what yeah that's okay uh, no I did not want that go away what did I press here why why are you now here I don't want to display virtual keyboard thank you this is my subtitle I guess I was too quick. What? Okay, something's bugging out. Maybe I'm pressing onto the keyboard on the screen with the keyboard itself. I'm pretty sure that's what's going on. Yeah, that was it. Okay, this, uh, we should use this as a subheading. This is my subheading. Okay. One thing I don't like is that uh, it forgets, whenever I change my heading type, it forgets what's the alignment that I wanted. So that's kind of meh. And then we have the third one is uh, chapter one. And then, ah, ah, and this leads me into the other one. Uh, this is from the general uh, kind of things that has been improved configure physical keyboard and then you can choose keyboard layout add keyboard layout and whoa we have tons of languages to choose from so i just need to find if they have norwegian one huh but not all <laughs> so i can still use my norwegian keyboard Yay! But all right, so already, you know, just the formatting stuff is quite a lot better than what I expected. But then you also have the ability to insert link to website, link to images, and you can link attachments as part of the uh, uh, text notebook. You can add recordings, and he's already recording. I don't want that recording, so I'm just going to delete it. Uh, then you can export it, you can synchronize it. What can we synchronize? Do not disconnect the internet research. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so now he's gonna 
syncing in the background, okay? And then you have the new thing, another new thing that's gonna be across all of the platform is now touch control is referenced as control. And under that one, you will have, depending on where you are, you will have the ability to uh, turn on and turn off touch, turn, um, turn on and turn off system bar, bottom gestures or side gestures. So that all is now under the control uh, thing. And then you have clear format, customize toolbar and save. So overall, I'm really, really happy with what I can see here. They have updated the text box in the regular notebook. So you can't take handwritten notes in uh, text notebooks or the notepads, whatever you want to call them. However, if I go into a notebook and now I can find I never use a text box, so that's why it's not there. So I'll need to add a text here. There we go. So I can show you this. There we go. So if I add a text box and I just kind of maybe position it somewhere around here and and I can start typing. Uh, the things that have been changed is that you can now select, uh, you should be able to select portions of the text. Yes. So you can select portions of the text and I guess you can change the color to the portion of the text. You have also the orientation. It can be horizontal or vertical. You can make it uh, just a part of it can be bold, underlined or italics and you can change it to maybe a different font size. Nope, not selection. This is for the entirety thing. All right, so that's basically what uh, what they've kind of added. So a little bit more things here. So you can selecting parts of the text. So you can copy, paste, cut, uh, as I said, vertical or horizontal text and support for more font styles overall. And these are like all English and you have tons and tons and fonts. Just see how small this sidebar here. So you can actually use a lot of different fonts in your te uh, text boxes. And why is this important? Well, because you can now combine, uh, yeah, the, the, the typing and, uh, and writing sort of like what you can do on the Remarkable as well. So you do have that type of combination here on the books as well, because they have expanded the functionality of the text box itself. It's now possible to use linking to another notepad, to a file or a web page. And uh, more importantly, link to option has been added to the lasso tool. So you should be able to, yep, yeah, there we go. You have a link. And you have tags as well, but you can now link to notes. And then I can choose, let's say, the test pad that I had here. And then you can icon and title. And I can use this um, to the typed text, right? So let's create that. And that's created. Okay. So how do I know? Well, well, where is it? Um, I'm confused. Yes, link to notes to this one. Okay, icon plus title, icon plus title, icon only. Create, now it created it. Okay, so when I had the remarks, it didn't work, but now it does. Okay, and it's marked like this. So let's see, does it work? No, does it work here? No, does it work there? Oh, yes, it does. Okay, so that works. Can we go back quickly to where we came from? Um, back? What? Oh man, come on. That's not what you want. <laughs> okay, so you can link to it, but it looks like you can't easily and conveniently, maybe, maybe the icon is hidden on, under here. Yep, and then we go to it. 
It goes there and where's the back to where I came from? No. So it was not the case of the keyboard. If I use back, it just goes back out. Again, again, partial implementation. Just, hey, here you go, let's go. Nobody even cares to test this. Yeah, then you have a linking options. You can link to notes, link to files, you can link to websites, and you can add attachments and have a recorder as well. This one can be touch for hand area, system bar, can be disabled, enabled, and things like that. Um, what I don't like about it, it, it's a nice attempt, but what I really don't like about it is that I rely on the touch icon a lot and I no longer have an option to have, and I'm not really, I don't care about this. I basically never use them. So it's nice to have. What I no longer have is the convenience of just pressing the touch icon to enable it or disable it. Now it has been transformed into from a convenience of one tap into two taps. That's uh, completely unnecessary. And it would have been fine if I had an option to not use control, but actually just add a single icon functionality from here in there for those who want that, but no. So good intention, bad result. And I'm just gonna go quickly and read through the list that they have of system slash apps, improvements, updates, or whatever. So some of them I know what they are, some of them are just plain weird and I don't understand what they mean. For example, the first one, add some functions of work profile similar to app cloner opening two apps at the same time. What? What does that even mean? So I don't know. The scrolling button option can be added to the page turn buttons. So the devices like the Leaf 2 or uh, Leaf with the um, or the Nova Air that uses the cover with the physical buttons that are side buttons, right? Page turn buttons. These can now actually be um, used as scrolling buttons as well. Um, in the navigation ball and app optimization settings, the, the scrolling that I mentioned can also be adjustable. So you can adjust the distance um, that the device uses for scrolling. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much that. I guess scrolling for in the web pages so that you can not swipe, but you can just use the buttons to scroll up and down. Um, Android keyboard, uh, as I mentioned, now has support for 34 languages. Unfortunately, it looks like none of the Nordic languages are there. So this update, even though it means something for some users, it means nothing for me yet because I can still not use the physical keyboard on my Tab X or the Tab Ultra. They have also added sliding up and down and left and right to the side gesture so that you can slide. I don't really know what that means because I do not use those slide uh, side gestures at all. I think that they're implemented terribly. So that's not something that I use, but in sliding for what? I mean, maybe their release notes could be a little bit more descriptive and more kind of detailed because this doesn't slide, add sliding up and down and left and right to the side gesture. Okay, where, when, who, how, what, don't know. Calendar Memo now supports um, a landscape mode. Great. Fixed issues with abnormal text display in some languages. Okay. Uh, the dictionary now supports online lookup and three dictionaries that are available to download. Okay. And fixed some known bugs and interface UI optimizations. Okay. So that's the list of all of the updates that have been added to the 3.3.2. The disappointing thing is, first of all, this one applies only so far. Uh, has been issued out and rolled out only to the Tab X and the Tab Ultra. I don't have the newer devices such as the Note Air 2, Note Air 2 Plus and things like that. Maybe it's rolled out to them as well. I don't know, but it hasn't rolled out to my older Note Air 1 and Nova Air 1. They still have not uh, uh, received it. Uh, my guess is would be that all Android 11 systems are going to get it because that's usually how they roll these things out. But now with the introduction of the Tab uh, OS as, as well, we have that kind of branching that the Android 11 branches to regular non-tab and the tab devices. So I'm not really sure how this one actually covers if it's just here or there. 
Either way, it on the tab X and the tab Ultra, it doesn't address one of the key issues, which is in handwriting, um, they have inexplicably completely annihilated the option of um, smoothing out the handwritings, which is something that we've had for a very long time, but it's not present and it has not been addressed in this update uh, so far. So that's also very disappointing to see. Um, one thing that's actually good, but it's not mentioned at all, uh, but it has been addressed on the tab X, and that is that in the display, we now have the option to choose far, far longer periods of time. 30 minutes, one hour, never for auto sleep and inactivity shutdown as well is there. I did not have time to check if they have fixed the uh, bug that it was present that the device would fall asleep while performing actions, something that I will be testing out. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. That's all the stuff that I've managed to check out for the update 3.3.2 for books devices so far. All right, so that's pretty much it. Some of it is useful, some of it is good, and I, some of it is meh. Um, I think that overall it's a good thing to see development and improvement uh, of the platform, which is good. What I don't like seeing is that they're still struggling with the direction, and it seems like uh, their entire development plan or strategy is basically what we call in the development world feature creep. What that means is you start your production and then uh, a, a new feature creeps in from the side and that usually offsets the budget, offsets the timeline, offsets the development process and offsets, most importantly, offsets the overall vision and tone and the direction that development team or the platform should be following. And I think this is the main problem that Books is currently facing. They want to remain competitive, aggressively so. So they see, for example, Supernote adding links so they add links. I report on the links and then I say, well, this is complete garbage because it doesn't really work. I mean, it's not good enough that you just add a link, you need to make it work better. So then they kind of check it out. Okay, here it is. It works a little bit better. And it is, it is. It's now working a little bit better. But um, why wasn't it implemented like that in the first place? Why aren't these features, if you're going to implement them into your platform, why aren't they done completely? Why is the MVP, in some cases below MVP, something deemed okay to be released in an update? That's to me completely unacceptable and something that pushes me very, very far away from a platform that decides to take a direction like that. And they've been taking that direction for now for a year, since update three. For me, since update 3, Books has been doing things that are all over the place. They are trying to do too many things at once and none of them are done properly. And that is a big, big problem. So uh, sure, over time, things do get improved. But at the same time, whilst certain things get improved, other things get degraded. For example, on the tab platform, at first we didn't have power uh, options, we didn't have uh, keyboard options. Sure, we got uh, power options, check, done, works now, great. We got 34 keyboard layouts, for some people great, for me personally and everybody in Nordic area, doesn't make any difference because none of the Nordic languages are supported. So still doesn't do anything for me. Even though it's an Android platform and even though I could do this on the other platform, on the older, inferior device. I could do what I can't do on the newest ones. Come on, that just is insane. And the, 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 the degradation and the weirdness continues because we still don't have the improvement of or the smoothing out of the handwritten lines on the tab devices, yet and, the tests, and as far as the steps back goes, now we have that control icon, which is like a do not disturb or, or denied icon. First of all, 
Really? Control is a circle with a line through it? That's, um, I don't know about uh, Eastern cultures, but in Western cultures, that is a symbol, especially in traffic, for not doing something, right? For a forbidden and whatever the content is there. Now, what would have made far more sense if they had implemented this properly was if you had that icon, and I can't believe that I am giving another development team advice for free now. I have to stop this at some point, but then again, at, at the same time, I want these devices to be improved for you guys so that it actually works. So this is the only reason why I actually do these things, but all right, maybe one of the last times I'm gonna be doing this for, I don't know, anyway. If you have this circle and a line crossed through it, and there's a no touch options that have been disabled, and I disable, for example, touch input, wouldn't it make sense that it's no longer an empty circle, but it actually shows the touch icon or a combined icon with a touch and a side and this and this. But then I guess you would have to hire somebody to actually a graphic artist to design icons and design UI for you. And that's not something that you have. So the inconvenience of this is that something that was one touch and something that I use all the time, disabling, enabling touch, because the hand, uh, the hand, palm rejection is not good on the book's devices. So you are actually forced to use that button all the time. Now it's no longer one button, it's two presses. And I have to do it because they haven't improved palm rejection issues. So that to me is just another big push away from the books platform. I love the devices. They're great. They're really, really great on overall. I mean, Note Air 2 and Note Air 2 Plus are probably still some of the best, one of the best devices in the market today. But they are, in my opinion at least, what is happening with the software development and the lack of direction they have is worrying and alarming at this point. On the other hand, you have excellent implementation of the text typed notepad now because they've seen uh, Remarkable come up with it. So hey, competitors, okay, let's do this and we're gonna do it much better than them. And they do, they do an excellent job and it, first impressions are that it works really, really well. It has much of more options and things like that. So that's actually kind of pretty cool. So, <laughs> It's so much push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, like two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back, maybe, and eventually you do creep up to a better place where you've been, but you do need a heck of a lot of patience, I think, with books. And for me, the biggest problem is that the learning curve, they keep requiring you to relearn things that are not easy to learn to begin with. and. This has been a problem with the books platform for years and hasn't been remedied and it's not getting better. It's just getting worse in my opinion because, uh, because yeah, everything that I've actually said up, to, up till now in many videos. So update 3.3.2, mm, some excellent features, some worrying tendencies, um, but overall, I think it's a good update, but should have been better. That's, that's, I think that's what I can kind of summarize it as. I hope that you found the video interesting, useful, or informative. If you did, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell down in the description below to get notified when new videos come out on my deep guide. Also, let me know in your comments below, what do you think, what your impression is of the update 3.3.2? Do you like it? Do you like the direction where these things are going? How's the usability versus features working out for you? Also, before I sign out, I would like to invite you to check out mydeepguide.com slash shop where you can find my daily organizer 2023, which is a hyperlinked PDF file that satisfies all, all of your personal or professional organizing and planning needs in a yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily fashion. And it supports multitudes of platforms. So you can use it on many devices and you can check out the video description or the video playlist in the description below to understand what MDO is and what it is not and if it's the right product for you or not.
Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye.